Hey guys, it's Ed from Spixel, and I am very excited because next to me is the BenQ PD3220U Designer Monitor. And this monitor checks a lot of boxes for me, both personally and professionally. Number one, I'm a professional concept artist and illustrator. I've been doing this for over 20 years. So having a professionally calibrated and built monitor is a very big deal for me. In fact, I would argue it is the most important tool for digital artists because that's where the image is going to land. The second is I'm a Mac user. So the fact that I can both connect and power my MacBook through a single Thunderbolt 3 cable is a huge plus for me, both in terms of ease of use and uh, just having a nice clean setup as far as that's concerned. I think it's extremely convenient. So the point of this video is gonna be twofold. Number one, I'm gonna share with you what my particular use case has been like, and secondly, how this monitor compares to its competition, all right? So you can make a more informed purchasing decision. That said, as far as the ergonomics, are concerned of this of this monitor it uh, is a very robust and i would argue a hefty boy there's a lot of technology baked into this including an internal power supply which means no power bricks yay <laughs> i'm a real stickler for cable management and honest to goodness having to having to fiddle with these big huge power bricks when you when you want a nice clean setup is a bit of a pain in the butt right so having all of that integrated directly into the panel is awesome but it does add a little bit to the weight more on that in a little bit it supports full height adjustment full swivel adjustment forward and back tilt as well as full rotation to 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 90 degrees so you can have it in portrait mode I, I in particular don't i would always use it in landscape mode but you have access to that if you want the base itself is really nice and sturdy nice and robust and the aesthetic the nice silver aesthetic really really matches a mac setup really really nicely it's very elegant now while we're on the subject of ergonomics my intended use case is and i'm still working on it uh, to have it set up next to my cintiq 27 qhd which is arguably a seven-year-old panel because it's a slightly more aged technology they just came out with the upgrade of it um, so the, 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 the display itself is aged a little bit. So I needed to have a reliable monitor right next to it, which I wanted mounted up on a VESA mount. These do support VESAs. That said, you need a very robust VESA mount if you want to, if you want to mount this because it is quite hefty. So make sure you're getting something a little bit more heavy duty, definitely something to take into account. Um, and don't underestimate how big a 32 inch monitor is it is very very large so if you're not working on a large desk if you're trying to mount this as a secondary monitor or if you want to daisy chain them make sure you have ample desk space for that because it will get very claustrophobic very very soon the other suggestion particularly if you come from ultra wide gaming monitors like my my beloved xr3501 that i've used for years um, if you come from an ultra wide monitor like that, you'll notice that any large size monitors really do function best with a curve. Okay. For a gaming monitor, because it's such an ultra wide monitor, it curves so that you're getting an even viewing angle so that the image doesn't seem distorted or, or, or bulging out on the outsides. Um, so if you're going to be working with a 32 inch monitor, I highly recommend it's a setup that where the monitor is not too close to your face. You want to make sure that it's a little bit further back. Why? Because at 32 inches, don't underestimate the size, if it's very close to you, the viewing distance between the middle and the corners is substantial to the point where you're actually going to feel like it's a little bit bulged out. It'll actually feel like it's con convex. Always make sure that it's a desk space where you can push it back. This is where a vase amount can come in very handy that can push it further back to the back of your desk. If that's not the case, I highly recommend the 27 inch model. Another feature. That is an absolute godsend. And, and BenQ really, really nail this. And I have to pronounce this properly because I am Canadian. The hotkey puck. This is something that BenQ implements into a lot of their different technology, namely their light bars, which I've reviewed on my channel numerous times. The, the screen bar, the screen bar plus, the screen bar halo uh, come with these pucks to make it easier for you to just quickly reach over and access different features like brightness adjustments and all that kind of stuff. In this particular case, there's a lot more function baked in. In fact, it completely replaces the, the control buttons on the back of the panel, which there are, by the way, just as a, as, a, as a backup in case you need to, um, to access the on-screen display features and it's fully customizable as well. As far as the actual buttons, you have the main dial in the middle, which you would use to both 
to input as well as activate the on-screen display, which is in the bottom right of the corner. You have three fully customizable shortcut buttons, one, two, and three for whichever color profiles that you prefer. And by default, if I press number one, it's MBook, which is the Mac calibrated uh, color profile. More on that in a sec. The second one by default is sRGB and the third is display P3 color gamut. You'll notice something else that just happened. You'll notice how fast those color profiles just changed. If you're using software calibration, AKA getting an external software and loading it through the processor, it doesn't only eat up processor power, it uses up the resources of the computer itself, but it's also much slower to calibrate and generally less accurate. So when you're actually doing it through the hotkey puck, because this is hardware calibrated, all of those calibrations are already baked right into the, into the, into the hardware of the computer. So you can cycle through different color profiles very, very quickly and efficiently. Now let's get into performance. It's intended performance. And we're going to let you know what my experience has been like. I have tested multiple different displays. As I mentioned before, I work professionally and to me, color and contrast is something I am a real stickler for. I have a very sensitive eye to colors or contrasts or values that are off because it's something that I'm constantly gauging. I've been doing this for decades. And I have tested out multiple different displays, one of which being the LG Ultrafine. When I originally, uh, when I originally purchased my MacBook Pro, I decided I wanted to go with a 5K Thunderbolt monitor to use as my secondary monitor. And when I got the LG Ultrafine 5K, which was being sold on the Apple site, I was immediately unhappy with it. And I was very, very surprised as well how many people endorse that product. I don't like it. I found number one, it is the absolute cheapest garbage plastic you can get. Like the bottom of the barrel plastic garbage, you can, you can bend the body of it with your fingers. It was that cheap. The second, the colors were completely washed out and terrible. Not at all reliable for professional use. But most importantly, the glare on that screen was so terrible the only way I could see a clear image in my studio was to turn all of the lights off. It was essentially unusable. And since my girlfriend would have her window open at the other end of the studio, if I had it oriented anywhere in the direction of the opposite wall, I could not see my screen. It was absolutely awful. Now, I've got this only slightly oriented off to an angle. But what you're not realizing is that this monitor has a direct, super bright light source only feet away from it right over here. And I'm going to turn it so you can get so you can see the glare under worst case scenarios. What you're seeing up here in the corner is worst case scenario. And just to give you an example of what it would be under normal glary circumstances is that. Okay. And listen, I love this display. The MacBooks have some of the best displays out there, but that reflection though, when it comes to color calibration, like I said, I'm a real stickler. And the only reason why I, or one of the main reasons why I am such a huge advocate for and such a huge supporter, let's get this more in frame, of the Apple Studio displays, a, lot, a, a feature that a lot of people completely took for granted, is the fact that it perfectly matches colors throughout all of your devices, MacBook, iPhone, iPad, etc. And this was a real big thorn in my side when I'd work on my Cintiq and then I would go over and look at it on my phone and it was a completely different image. The values were completely off and this was not what I painted. I tested and made a direct side-by-side -side comparison of these two monitors. For a good 15-20 minutes I just sat there and stared at them back and forth. Every different color and value I could, I could spot different. Apart from a tiny little difference in contrast, BenQ nailed their Mac color profile, which they refer to as M-Book. Chef's kiss, golf clap. You guys did an absolutely spectacular job. This is a very reliable monitor. Now, that said, being a digital painter, contrast does matter, and you don't have quite the same contrast ratio on this. But for professional work, uh, generally, the maximum nits you're going to want on a, on a professional monitor in certain use cases is 100 nits because it's intended to be used in a dark environment to get the best color accuracy or 160 nits, depending on the use case. The only other direct competitor would obviously be the Apple Studio Display created by Apple itself. So this in comparison to the Apple Studio Display is the budget option and it's a reliable professional budget option. I support this monitor. I think they did an absolutely awesome 
job. A couple of other extra features. One of the things that you can customize directly into the hotkey puck, depending on your particular use case, is the ability to split screen. It's called picture in picture. And you can actually have two different color profiles split halfway, which is particularly useful if you're working in digital painting, for instance, and you want to be able to check how your colors function. And in my case, uh, uh, set the second, the second half of the screen to a black and white profile so it can also verify my values at the same time. If you were using a strictly behind the screen button, you would have to go through a menu and fiddle with all these buttons to get to that color profile. When things are fiddly, you usually just end up ignoring them. But the fact that you can set this to one of these customizable buttons and just click the button and get access to that, it encourages you to quickly flip back and forth between different color profiles, check my values, go back. For animators, it actually has different color modes. I'm actually gonna come over here because it's got a couple of really cool features. It has animation mode. I have a degree in classical film animation. This is my original background. And for anybody who works in animation, it enhances clarity of dark areas without, without overexposing bright regions for better clarity. For instance, when you're onion skinning, superimposing layers on top of layers, it gives you better clarity of your, of your underlying layers without blowing out your whites, which can create a lot of glare and a lot of contrast, making it hard to read. It also has CAD or CAM mode, which is improved contrast of lines and shapes in technical illustrations. Now, I'm not a technical illustrator. I don't have a background in industrial design. So you'll, you, you'll be able to, to chime in there if this is your particular expertise. Lastly is a feature that's particularly cool. And it was, I never asked for it, but thank you very much, is what's known as the KVM switch, which stands for Keyboard Video Monitor Mouse. Essentially, in layman's terms, it functions something like universal control, essentially allowing you to be able to, to, to work on multiple different uh, systems using a single keyboard and mouse, because you might be connecting multiple different systems and flipping back and forth of them through the back, which as I mentioned, can be daisy chained as well. Okay. So it actually allows you to just clean up your setup. So you don't have to work with multiple mice and keyboards on your screen, on your, on your desktop, just keeping everything nice and clean, which is a really nice added perk. So final thoughts, what is my experience been like working on this monitor? If you want to save yourself a significant amount of money, but you want a reliable, professional, and very, very enjoyable monitor to work on, I, I think that they've did, done an absolutely spectacular job. Light mitigation and, and glare medi mitigation, having a nice diffused screen not while not sacrificing image quality. The scaling that you get working on a, on a nice crisp 4K monitor when you're working on a Mac is quite enjoyable because a lot of my monitors are 1440p, which do not scale well with Macs, um, like my Cintiq 27 QHD, it's a 1440p monitor. The color fidelity, the hardware calibration baked directly into it. It does, by the way, have speakers, which I haven't really spoken about because, well, they're functional, period, moving on. <laughs> I use professional speakers, so, you know, I use high quality speakers, so for me, it's, it's whatever, it's nice to have, it's there. Um, I will add something else. The connectivity, because I come from a lot of BenQ monitors, BenQ like to keep things clean as far as the setup's concerned, but I've always found it very finicky, particularly on the XR3501 curved monitor to connect cables to the back. Just You'd have to take the whole monitor and flip it down just to be able to see with a flashlight where the thing is. They've helped this a lot. And one of the, one of the tips that I saw online that I thought was particularly handy was that when you're connecting the first time your cables, take the entire monitor and turn it sideways and they've allotted extra space in the back. It's still a clean setup where everything wires through the back and it's got a nice back cover that covers it, but there's more depth to there so you can more easily see behind there to connect things while not sacrificing a clean setup. But just turn the monitor to the side and then you can access those ports directly through the side and even rotate it so that you can access it. I found this is a very, very handy tip for setting things up for the first time because on the XR3501, I used to curse trying to get those damn cables in there because I could not see back there and, and aim it properly. I thought that was a really, really nice feature. As far as the, as if you're using the actual stand itself, the ability to get full tilt height swivel rotation functionality is absolutely awesome. The build quality and the weight of that base is fantastic. It clips in one little clip like that, very easy to set up, literally takes 10 seconds. What I would have preferred is a, perhaps a little bit more of a definitive hard stop at a full horizontal 
uh, um, position because that because that horizontal position only has a soft hard stop. It, you're not always confident that it's perfectly level. So I very often end up using a level just to make sure it's perfectly level because I'm anal retentive about stuff like that, having a slightly tilted monitor. With that said, I can fully stand behind this monitor from a professional perspective. I find that they absolutely nailed this out of the park. I, I find that the M book color calibration is about as close to a Mac display as you're gonna get without spending the cost of an Apple Studio display in my humble opinion. So I can I fully support this. I think that BenQ nailed it out of the park. I think that the functionality, the IO, the connectivity, the ability to daisy chain, the ability to be a, a, to power and connect uh, a MacBook with a single cable is an absolute godsend. And it is the only reliable alternative to an Apple Studio display that'll save you a ton of money in my humble opinion. All right, so again, a huge thanks to BenQ once again for sending us over and happy shopping. Take care.